What's going on, my friends? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Tiger Review, a semi-regular series on this channel where I'll be giving you guys my honest and spoiler-free opinions on the latest TV shows and movies that I've been watching. And at the end, I'll be rating each of them on a scale of one to five uppercuts. For context, a one uppercut show or movie is something that was a complete waste of my time and might as well have made my eyes bleed. And a five uppercut TV show or movie is literally one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my entire life. So with all that said, let's jump right into it. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm a huge anime nerd. So it only makes sense to kick things off with an anime called Free Rin, Beyond Journey's End. Now this is a somewhat new show that started at the end of last year and the season finale just premiered last week. So now you can catch the entire first season, all 28 episodes on Crunchyroll or possibly some third party website you like to use, that's up to you. But regardless of how you watch this show, let me tell you, this is literally one of the greatest things I have ever seen in my entire life, which uh, I guess kind of spoils the rating already, but it doesn't matter. The point is, I love this show, guys. It is currently my favorite anime of the year. I know it's still early. I know we're only in April, but I have a hard time imagining another show beating this out for my anime of the year. It's just that good, guys. It's about an elven mage's adventures after her and her party of heroes have defeated the demon lord, the big bad boss guy, and uh, brought about a era of peace in the world. And that alone was interesting to me because usually that's where most shows end. Usually the heroes are working towards either getting strong enough or just traveling to wherever the big bad boss guy is to defeat him and save the world. And then the show ends. This show starts where that happens. And literally the first scene is the heroes coming back to town, to the capital, to be celebrated after they save the world. And uh, I'm not gonna say more than that, but that's basically the idea of the show. And I recognize this is not a show for everyone because it can seem a bit slow. Like the first couple of episodes, I was like, I'm not sure if I can get into this because it feels like there's not enough happening to keep me engaged. But I gave it a chance. And after like the third or fourth episode, I was, I was fully locked in, man. From the animation, of course, to the music, to the story, the characters, the relationships between the characters, um, just the overall ambiance of the show is just super nice. You just wanna live in this world and you just care about all the characters so much. You just wanna hang out with them and see what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? Like there are literally full episodes where it's just people walking around, uh, maybe talking, maybe doing some shopping, and there's no fighting, no action whatsoever. And that's still a very enjoyable episode because it's just so well done. And I feel like I'm not doing a great job of explaining what makes this show so great, but you just gotta watch it. You just gotta experience it for yourself to really understand the masterpiece that this show is. It's one of the few shows that I look forward to watching every single week. I think I picked it up when there were only about five or six episodes out. And since then, it's been appointment viewing every single week. So I've been following it for about 22 weeks now. And like I said, the season finale just aired last week. And now I'm like super depressed because there's not gonna be any more free run this week or for the foreseeable future. Luckily, another season was announced. I don't think there's a date, or at least I might've missed it, but I would assume it's sometime next year, which is fine because perfection takes time. There's not much more I can say, guys. This is, I feel like, as perfect as a show as you can possibly make. It's wholesome, it's um, heartwarming, it just, makes me happy. Like there are so many moments in this show where I'm just sitting by myself on the couch watching and I just got like a huge smile on my face 
because of some interaction that happened between various characters or something good happened to one of the characters I really like and I'm just sitting there with this huge smile on my face like an idiot because that's just how happy this show makes me sometimes and I love the way they handle things like magic, demons, the loss of friends or companions, you know, just very common themes across many different shows, but the way that it's portrayed in this one is just a little bit different. It's got its own unique spin on things, and it's just awesome, man. So I feel like I've gone on for long enough. There are other things we have to review in this episode, but as far as my rating goes, I think it's pretty obvious this is already a top 10 anime of all time for me and it easily gets five uppercuts out of five so that is free rin beyond journey's end go watch it now so now we're gonna move on to something that is very different from free rin it's a korean reality competition show called physical 100 season two to be exact, which just finished airing on Netflix uh, a few days ago. And this is a show that, unless you're a pro athlete or an extraordinarily active regular person, it's gonna make you feel wildly out of shape. I mean, I feel like I'm a fairly active person. I go to the gym three, four times a week and play basketball every single week, and even then, Watching this show made me feel like the laziest piece of crap in the world because these people are just on a whole different level, man. I mean, the idea is that they find a hundred of the most fit people across South Korea and have them compete in these crazy fitness challenges, right? And eventually, one person is crowned the uh, most fit person in the world or uh, the person with the perfect physique and they take home 250,000 US dollars which uh, is not bad that's not bad and the contestants are just super impressive you got people who are bodybuilders you got strongmen uh, wrestlers rugby players rowers crossfitters swimmers MMA fighters and this season there was even a sumo wrestler thrown in the mix and um, you know, most of them are not regular people. They're mostly people that are at the top or near the top of their individual disciplines. You got gold medalists in wrestling, gold medalists in boxing, uh, former MMA champions, and so on and so forth. So they're not regular people. Uh, oh, there was one guy who actually <laughs> was a cosplayer and he came in uh, dressed up as Zoro, but it was like a really, really good cosplay. He was holding two swords got the extra sword in his mouth, and uh, honestly, he was probably the most jacked cosplayer I've ever seen. But yeah, the idea is you got all these different people from different fitness-related disciplines, and they're all competing, and it's just a joy to watch. I don't think you need to be any kind of like fitness enthusiast or athlete to enjoy this show. I think it does have a lot of appeal for all people um, but if I'm being honest I think that season two did not quite live up to the first season at least to me okay of course this is my personal opinion if you guys enjoyed season two more those of you that have watched it of course uh, that's okay but I feel like there was something very magical about season one that was missing in this new season maybe it's just the cast of characters or the contestants because I found in season one, there were a lot of people that I was rooting for. There were at least five contestants that I would have been really happy with winning the entire thing. Now, unfortunately, none of them ended up winning, but this season, uh, I'm not saying that the contestants weren't great. I'm not saying that they weren't interesting, but there wasn't anyone in particular that I kind of latched onto that was like my personal favorite. So I think that did make it harder for me to uh, you know, get into it. And eventually I did. I mean, the first couple of episodes were kind of slow. Um, one thing that I didn't like about this season was the fact that they reused one of the main challenges, or I think they called them quests, 
uh, from the last season and it was one of the events that I actually didn't like that much so watching that was kind of a drag but once we got past that by the time we reached episode three or four I was pretty locked in I was still really excited to watch every episode from there but it wasn't quite on the same level as the first season which I would have given five uppercuts so definitely go check that out but yeah this season was still a lot of fun and you could tell that there was a significantly higher budget just based on the sets and based on the scale of the challenges compared to the first season which makes sense considering that last season was so successful right and uh, the overall production quality went up the new quests were all pretty fun and unique um, but the main thing is I just feel like the cast from last year was stronger at least for me personally right so um, still had a great time did not regret the time I put into it I'm excited for season 3 to come out which has already been confirmed and uh, there's also actually going to be an American version of this show coming out at some point in the future I'm not sure if it's going to be this year or next year but I heard there was going to be for sure an American physical 100 and I'm actually really curious to see what kind of characters or what kind of people they have on this show. Like I said, for the Korean version, they have a bunch of, you know, legendary Korean athletes, right? Gold medalists, uh, champions of various combat sports, stuff like that. So for the American version, could they get people like, I don't know, Michael Phelps, uh, Simone Biles, um, maybe some... NBA or NFL players, maybe retired ones, right? Because I feel like the active ones are not going to risk the injury, but maybe like some recently retired NBA players would be a lot of fun. That is Physical 100 Season 2. Still a great time. Not as good as Season 1, as I've said a million times, but still a very fun season. And for that reason, this one gets four uppercuts out of five. Okay, next on the list is the Roadhouse remake. Roadhouse. On Amazon Prime. Um, for context, I didn't watch the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze, so I wasn't really sure what to expect going in, but I am a huge MMA fan. I basically watch every single UFC event from all the fight nights to, of course, the pay-per-views and even some of the smaller promotions like Bellator and uh, PFL from time to time. So... It's kind of my guilty pleasure, and when I heard that Conor McGregor, the notorious Conor McGregor, was going to be one of the main characters in this movie, that was enough to catch my attention. So that was the main reason I watched this movie. And um, oh, <laughs> there was also a random cameo from Post Malone, which was not expected because uh, I had no idea he was going to be in the movie, but he was solid in his role, actually. He was only on screen for about two or three minutes, but he did a good job. And I think the best way to describe it is that it's a fun, dumb action movie. If you don't take it too seriously, you can have a lot of fun with it. It's just a lot of this movie is really, really dumb. Uh, one thing that I noticed as I was watching the movie, and I'm sure you'll notice it as well, is that the number of times someone says the words road house, is hilarious. If you played a drinking game where you took a shot every time you heard Roadhouse, you would be absolutely hammered by the end of the movie, which would probably make the movie a lot more enjoyable, if I'm being honest. Now, as far as Jake Gyllenhaal is concerned, who plays the lead, um, I believe his name is Elwood Dalton. Uh, he's this witty, but kind-hearted, but also tortured former UFC fighter. Um, I think he did a great job. Um, I tend to like Jake Gyllenhaal performances, I tend to like his characters, and this one is no different. Um, Conor McGregor was the big bad guy, the main person that Elwood Dalton has to fight, and I think he did a serviceable job in this role. It's pretty clear that he's not a professional uh, actor, <laughs> that much is obvious, and I think sometimes he tries a little bit too hard to come off as this like deranged lunatic guy um, but for the most part I think it worked for me there were some scenes where uh, he just seemed kind of out of place like you have all these 
actual actors, and they have this dude who is clearly not a professional actor. He is a professional fighter, and he does great in the fight scenes, but in the actual acting parts where he's delivering lines, uh, some of them were a bit rough, I gotta say, but it's okay. Uh, personally, I give him a pass just because he's not an actor. It's his first major role in a movie, and I feel like he did a good job. It was pretty funny sometimes when he was walking around with his like chest puffed up and his arms all the way out to the sides like this, kind of like um, some of those guys at the gym with the invisible lat syndrome. He basically had that going on for the entire movie. And uh, that was kind of weird, but also funny. And I enjoyed it. I mean, like I said, this is a pretty dumb movie, but as far as just good action, um, it's got a lot of that. It's got a lot of great fight scenes. The fight choreography was fantastic. And of course it helps that you have some actual professional fighters, right? And even Jake Gyllenhaal, um, who's not a fighter, did well. I mean, he got really jacked for the movie and I'm sure they gave him some professional training. So he held his own in those fight scenes. And uh, there were some humor as well. There were like a few moments that were genuinely funny that um, didn't make me laugh out loud, but I was definitely laughing in my head. So that's a start. And oh, one last thing, the soundtrack, the music in this movie is awesome. There were these live music performances in the Roadhouse that I found really enjoyable and were some of the highlights of the movie for me. But outside of that, the story of this movie is just complete nonsense, man. The characters were all pretty shallow. You didn't really, at least I didn't really like any of them. I didn't really feel any kind of attachment or any reason to root for any of them outside of maybe the main character a little bit. Um, and there was also this like central romance that was just not that believable. Like there was no point in this movie where I thought it makes sense that these two people like each other, you know? So that was also kind of weird. And uh, ultimately it just kind of felt like nothing that happened in the movie mattered. <laughs> it felt like after everything was settled, after we got to the end of the movie, um, none of it really meant anything and nothing really changed, you know? And I guess I really shouldn't focus on the story too much. It should just be about the people kicking and punching each other in the face. But I still want my action movies to have somewhat of a sensible story or at least a story that has meaningful stakes, right? And this movie was lacking that. But um, if you are just bored on a random afternoon or on a weekend where you have nothing better to watch, you know, if you already finished Free Rin and finished Physical 100, then this isn't a bad choice if you want to just like shut off your brain for a few hours and watch something fun but dumb. So with all that said, the Roadhouse remake featuring Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor is ironically the lowest rated movie slash show so far with three uppercuts out of five. Now, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to include this movie in this video because it's not really that well known and honestly, I didn't like it as much as I was hoping I would, but then I realized actually it makes the most sense to include these somewhat obscure shows and movies in these videos because it helps people that are watching like you uh, discover them, right? So. The last thing we're gonna review is a movie from, I believe, 2023. So it's been out for a while. It's a Korean movie called Soulmate. And uh, it's currently available, I believe, on Tubi and at least one other platform. Like I said, a Korean movie. It's got similar vibes to a very popular Netflix movie that came out last year called, was it last year? Anyways, a very popular Netflix movie called 20th Century Girl. Now, of course, the movies are obviously not the same, but I found that the vibes were very similar. And also the male lead, the central love interest, is also played by the same actor. So definitely some parallels between the two movies. 
and uh, I really enjoyed 20th Century Girl, right? So I thought this one would be right up my alley. And in some ways, it was, but in other ways, it just didn't quite work for me. Not to say that I didn't like it, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, or hoped that I would. So uh, yeah, this movie is actually a remake or maybe more of an adaptation of a Chinese movie of the same name, Soulmate, which is based off a book, uh, I think also called Soulmate. So it's a book first, then a Chinese movie, then a Korean movie. And it's basically about two girls that have been friends since childhood and uh, the progression of their relationship as they go through uh, life and all the different challenges that come with it, uh, mostly depressing, I would say. Um, it's a beautifully shot movie, I gotta give it that. All the actors absolutely killed their roles, and um, it's clearly a very well-made movie. It's just, I felt like a lot of the decisions that the people making this movie didn't make a lot of sense to me, personally. And that could just be a result of me not being able to relate to the central characters, which are two young to like early adult women. Um, maybe I just don't have similar experiences, so I can't really understand what people would do in those situations. I recognize that, but yeah, a lot of their actions, a lot of their decisions throughout the movie um, thoroughly confused me. I don't want to get into specifics just because this is supposed to be spoiler free but I was just like kind of confused throughout the movie about why certain people were doing certain things. And by the end of the movie, I was just left with a bunch of questions. As a whole, I just felt like the story was a bit too depressing for me. It felt like there was nothing going right in either of these girls' lives and it just got worse and worse as the movie went along. And I recognize that not every movie needs to have a happy ending, but I would like there to be at least like a tiny spark of hope at the end to not make me depressed for the rest of the night. Well, maybe there was some hope now that I'm really thinking about it, but it wasn't enough for me. And I actually had to watch some random rom-com after this one just to lighten the mood a bit and so I could fall asleep that night. And even then, I stayed up for like half a night just thinking about everything that happened and how rough life can be sometimes for some people, which maybe was the point of the movie. So I don't really know. Honestly, my, my, my feelings on this movie are, are pretty mixed. Um, you know, one moment I think it's great and I love it. And then another moment I'm like, this is just, a sad, depressing, no good movie, and I don't really know where I fall on that spectrum right now. <laughs> if you want a movie that's most likely gonna give you a good cry, um, then this is a good choice, it's a good candidate. Uh, just make sure that you're not already sad going in, because then you'll just be fully depressed by the end. Um, this is actually a really highly acclaimed movie, uh, it's got 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not a lot of reviews because I don't think it's really a super popular, like, big movie. But nonetheless, everyone that watches it, or at least most people that have seen it, seem to love it. I didn't quite vibe with it the way I wanted to, but I can recognize that it's a beautiful and extremely well-made movie. It's just the story had some problems for me. But nonetheless, I still want to give it not three uppercuts, because that would put on the same level as um, <laughs> Roadhouse, which is just not fair, but it's also not quite a four uppercut movie. So for that reason, we are gonna give out our first half uppercut rating of this series, and Soulmate gets three and a half uppercuts out of five. And that concludes the first ever episode of the Tiger Review. Thank you guys so much for watching. In total, to recap, we reviewed four shows or movies. Actually, it was uh, two shows and two movies. Free Rin, Beyond Journey's End, gets five uppercuts out of five. It is 
basically a perfect show. Uh, Physical 100 Season 2, tons of fun, 4 uppercuts out of 5. We got Roadhouse Remake, which was dumb but enjoyable. As far as the action is concerned, it gets 3 uppercuts out of 5. And Soulmate, a movie that is beautiful and sad, a little too sad for me, but nonetheless, it gets 3.5 uppercuts out of 5. Um, I would recommend all of these for different reasons, depending on what you're looking for or what mood you're in, but definitely, definitely, if you're gonna check out one of these things I talked about in today's video, Free Rin Beyond Journey's End is the one. And that's gonna do it for today's inaugural episode of the Tiger Review. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about it. Uh, let me know if you have seen some of these shows or movies I talked about, what you think about them, and uh, look forward to the next episode. Uh, I'm watching a lot of stuff right now, haven't decided what's going to be in the next Tiger review. It's definitely coming soon. So thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.